Welcome to Invest in Finland's webinar on why Finland, the generic part of our messages. Today we have about 30-45 minute agenda for you. Uh, I will be your host. My name is Petra Söderling. I'm an advisor at Business Finland on uh, digital technologies doing Invest in Finland work for Business Finland and later I will be joined by my colleague Megan Williams, an advisor and my colleague for Invest in Finland activities on clean tech and bio and circular economies. Uh, my own background is in software development actually. I spent 12 years at Nokia in various positions heading open source software development teams and uh, different innovation teams in the in Nokia Research Center and the technology platform unit that was uh, producing Nokia smartphone operating systems. 12 years ago when Nokia was sold to Microsoft, I left the company and moved to the United States where I have um, been lucky to actually start two different startup company companies, one in New York for mobile app development and then one in New Orleans. Uh, five years ago I moved down here and I started a company on uh, 3D modeling for, for real estate. But for about a year and a half now, I've been working for Business Finland from New Orleans and um, enjoying it very much. The agenda today, first we're going to go through why Finland, the generic messages on foreign direct investments, uh, and then we're going to dig deeper into the digital technologies and clean tech, and we'll wrap up, as I said, in about half an hour, 45 minutes. Let's start. I am going to start sharing my presentation and our producer today will make it live for you. If you're seeing my screen, what I'm sharing, it says Finland technology superpower. So yeah, we're talking about Finland as the country, but it's really impossible to talk about Finland without talking about the engineering uh, force. Finland is a country of engineers. First, a few facts about Finland if you're not familiar with the country. A uh, very small population, 5.5 million people, located between Sweden and Russia in Northern Europe. Finland gained independence in 1917, so it's been an independent country for over a hundred years now. It is governed by a multi-party coalition government. At the moment, the, um, there's five different parties in the government and interestingly enough, each of those five parties are governed or led by a woman. Finland has been a member of the European Union since 1995. We operate in euros. The current corporate tax is 20%, which is one percentage point less than in the United States, so very attractive. Business languages Finnish, English and Swedish. Finnish and Swedish are the um, official languages of the country, but Finland has been rated as one of the top four countries in places to do business in English by EF English Proficiency Index. I know many people uh, that have been doing business for years in Finland. They don't speak a word of Finnish or Swedish, so, so that will be no concern. On the next slide, um, I want to talk a little bit about the work-life balance. This is not a slide that I typically show, but uh, a lot of people working from home, a lot of employees this spring realizing that it is important that your employees uh, feel happy and balanced in their life. So I wanted to bring this to your attention. Finland has been number one in the Family Life Index for four years in a row. This is the Expat Insiders study. Uh, it includes things like number one in availability of childcare and education, number one in family well-being. The United Nations has also ranked Finland as the happiest country in the world for three years in a row now. And the Expat Insider also ranks Finland number one in the quality of education. And, and this is really the cornerstone of success in Finland. They have invested in high quality education for decades and um, the quality of education, the, the, the education is available to everyone regardless of your background 
or uh, your status in society. And that is really um, why Finland has become the success story it is today. And here on this side, you can see the uh, what that uh, quality of education brings to you. Uh, global leader in innovation talent. If we start from the right hand side, uh, the blue box there, you'll see professionals working in R&D per capita. Typically, people think about Germany as the epicenter of technology and engineering and high quality products, but actually in the United States as well, it's a country of high technology, all of the uh, leading tech and software companies come from the United States, but Finland actually has more than a third of professionals working in R&D per capita. So this is, uh, as it's a small country, this is a dense hub uh, of engineers that are available to work for you as an American company. And on the left-hand side, you'll see four white rectangles, and these are again positions. By the way, this is such a Finnish way of presenting things. It's all about facts and figures. Finland is very good with numbers, not so much with small talk or describing things. So um, I always smile a little bit when I show these slides. Number one in international patent application. That means patents filed from Finland to the international market. Uh, Finland is number six per capita in uh, any patent, patents filed for the domestic market or uh, international market. Um, interestingly enough, United States is per capita number 14 and China is number 37 in per capita patent application fi filings. Number one in innovation business environment. And by the way, these numbers are from the World Intellectual Property Organization's index from last year. And I picked these numbers because they're number one positions, but there were a lot of number two, number three positions that didn't fit on the slide. Uh, another one is number one in e-participation. That means how the government is interacting with the people on using various online platforms. And then we have number one in mobile app creation. And this, of course, is the legacy of Nokia that we cannot ignore in these presentations. You may remember, I'm actually going to go to the next slide. You may remember 10, 15 years ago, Nokia was number one in smartphones in the world before the iPhone came and killed that market for Finland's Nokia. Um, um, all the way up until 2012, uh, Nokia was Finland's biggest employer. They had about 24,000 people working from them in Finland, and that one company accounted for 4% of Finland's GDP. So pretty much everyone, quote unquote, worked at Nokia. But then when ha what happened around 2010, 2011, uh, of course, uh, the business started going badly for them because of competition and uh, the mobile devices unit was sold off to Microsoft and Nokia ended up laying off 13,000 people in this tiny country, which was a huge blow. But the way they did it was exemplar exemplary and, and very altruistic. They set up a bridge program that allowed for the engineers to find new opportunities, maybe in academia, maybe working for other companies, but also to start their own companies. Uh, two things that Nokia did. They allowed for researchers to spin out some of the IP that they had been working on, creating this uh, intellectual property pro proliferation in the country that allowed for these um, new startup companies to thrive. And they also set up funds. They gave money to these people leaving the, the, com the company. So um, this big box on the left hand side uh, is the early stage growth companies funding private funding that has been flowing into Finnish startup companies and the money has been increasing. It's partly been increasing because the number of startup companies have been increasing, but also because um, international investors have woken up to the extreme high quality uh, and high value of these new startup companies in Finland. So last year, um, Finnish startup companies rigged in about 500 million euros. Now on your right hand side, the box that says has the Business Finland logo on it, here we talk about the public funding. 
So uh, last year, Business Finland uh, funded about 4,000 new startup companies, 589 million euros. It's about $600 million. And every year, we also have another 4,000 new companies being established. At any given time, we have about three or 400 what we call growth companies. So these are companies that have grown significantly over the past um, three years. And this, um, you know, looking at the big picture, having 500 million euros private money and five, 600 million euros of public money is really the winning combination or formula for a small country like Finland to thrive and succeed in the international market. The next slide is a celebration of this startup culture, uh, international startup event called Slush, organized every year in November when it's dark and, and uh, you know, very unpleasant in Finland. Last year, 25,000 people attended from all over the country traveling to this uh, dark and cold country in November. We had about 3,500 startups pitching to 2,000 investors. And these investors came from all over the world. Also, the startups came, came from all over the world, so it's not just for Finnish companies. Uh, they've had a charter plane flying from the Bay Area for a few years in a row, also a charter plane from China. Interestingly enough, Chinese investors are very active as well. Um, 600 journalists, so this is really a big party and big celebration, but it's also a place where these investment deals are being made every year. Now this year, unfortunately, they've canceled, so they will be back in 2021. Business opportunities in high tech and services, and this is a Business Finland slide. Oh, I didn't mention Business Finland is um, the Finnish government's innovation funding arm. I should have said that earlier. Uh, Megan and I work to promote Finland as a foreign direct uh, destination, and our colleagues back in Finland work to promote Finnish companies uh, to create and ship great products. Um, and the fields that we'll be talking are bioeconomy and clean tech that Megan will be talking about later. I, I'm talking about technology and digitalization in a moment. We also have a very strong health tech sector in Finland. Uh, unfortunately, we're not covering it today. Uh, we should really have a separate webinar for health tech. Um, and then we Business Finland funds travel and tourism activities from and to Finland. Now on the next slide, I collected major American companies that have been in Finland for a while or more recent examples. Uh, I'm going to pick a few examples. Uh, IBM has been in Finland for as long as I can remember, and that's pretty far back, uh, decades and decades. Most recently, what they did in Finland, they uh, they're utilizing their Watson's AI engine to, to do healthcare, specifically genomic analysis, together with a number of Finnish companies. So they've established a healthcare AI center in Finland doing genomics analysis. Uh, a very recent example is Qualcomm, American tech giant. They just entered Finland last year. They opened a 5G and IoT tech center in the city of Oulu in northern Finland and it's it's also targeted towards startups and research institutes working together on 5G and IoT technologies and um, they Qualcomm announced it as a place to promote IP generation and monetization of solutions with a quick turn platform offering so utilizing the existing platform knowledge and know-how to crack out new products and services. They're working on smart cities, wearables, AI, robotics, drones, um, you name it, anything that utilizes IoT and 5G telecom networks. John Deere, many of you may know, is a leader in um, IoT data analytics in, in their field. They bought a Finnish company back in 2000. Uh, they invested in the country and um, in 2012, they did uh, they um, they built a new uh, new facilities in the center of Finland. It was an eight million 
Euro um, project, and they focus on automation of the production of their frame frames and loaders. They did receive two and a half million euros uh, from the Finnish government for ongoing and future development projects. Uh, so they are developing this groundbreaking IoT um, data analytics sensor technologies in, in Finland. It's a way of making John Deere's agricultural equipment smarter and more efficient. Google Google's investment, I think, is the largest foreign investment into Finland ever. They uh, started with a data center in the city of Hamina by the Gulf of Finland in 2009. They've been running their uh, Europe's Google, Google Cloud from this Finnish data center, utilizing the seawater of Gulf of fin Finland and the uh, inexpensive and sustainable energy that the Finnish economy is able to provide. And last year they announced another 600 million investment. So that brings total their investment into the data, their Finnish data centers into two billion dollars. That is huge. And they really focus on the efficiency, but also the sustainability and and uh, you know energy friendly uh, activities in their their data centers in Finland. Maybe the last one to mention from this slide, uh, GE Health Village. I mentioned the health tech in Finland being very advanced. They again, they founded. This is a theme. So all of these companies found tech centers where they work together with Finnish innovative startup companies and research institutes. They founded a health village in the city of Helsinki in 2014. They're developing wireless patient monitors, among other products there, together with 40 Finnish companies. Uh, this was a 30 million euro project and they got 10 million euros from Business Finland to set it up. And the reason why they chose Finland, GE says, GE operates in almost every country and this project could have been implemented in the US, India or China. But when a company is considering where it can get the best value for its money, public innovation funding is really helpful. And they also praise the seamless cooperation with the hospitals of Finland. The all of the equipment that they produce is tested and validated in a real Finnish hospital environment. Moving forward, Business Finland services, what we can provide for you. We'll do data collection, data analysis for your company and for your industry. We can look for opportunities for you. We will guide you on different alternatives, how to set up in Finland, whether it makes sense to invest in a startup company, buy out a, a Finnish company or do a new greenfield, greenfield R&D investments, hiring your own direct employees. We'll help you network with the Finnish ecosystems. I'll be talking about the ecosystems in a bit. And then once you're um, there, you know, you've made a decision, we'll help you set up a business with location uh, hunting. As an American citizen, you're going to need a visa work permit to work in Finland and EU. Finland offers something called a startup visa. If you do come into the country and you start a new company, we can fast track you through the immigration by doing a recommendation on your startup company if, if we think that it's, it has potential. Everything that we do for you is always confidential and always free of charge. OK, moving on to the digital technologies. Excuse me. Here is a, this is really, it's, it's a history slide. These are technologies that many of you may know. If you're a software engineer, you've used, you may use some of these in your daily work, but you may not have had an, any idea that they actually come from Finland. If you're a gamer, um, you, you may see familiar games. Angry Birds is from Finland. Clash of Clans and Heyday are two uh, Supercell games. Uh, Clash of Clans, I actually just read. They have created more revenue than any other game in the history of gaming. That's 8.4 8 billion US dollars. So gaming is really is not no small business. Other um, logos on this you'll 
see Linux, for example, that's probably familiar to you. It was created as an open source operating system created by Linus Torvalds in the University of Helsinki in 1991. What a lot of people don't know, so I didn't know before I started looking into it, is, is that Linus Torvald created Git, uh, the version control and delivery system to deliver Linux kernel code. Uh, so um, people using GitHub and Git's release system are using Finnish technology every day. That was done in 2005, so it's newer. The green logo down there, cute, is a cross-platform development tool. It was uh, originally a Norwegian invention, but Nokia bought it. Um, I forgot, I, I worked at Nokia at the time, so 10, 15 years ago, and um, further developed it into being a, you know, a native application creation tool, which means you can create a native application on any platform, including Linux, by the way, but Windows, Android, iOS, etc. And Nokia is open source. It is currently used in a lot of new industries doing software. So automobiles, for example, you the dashboard on your new car may have applications that are created by Qt. My uh, SQL is a database management system that many of you, you may use. That was created by uh, Monti Videnius in 1995. Uh, as a coherent database management system that didn't exist at the time. Interesting, the, the word my is not an English word. My, his daughter's name was Mu, so he, he named the product after his daughter. My SQL was sold to Sun Microsystem, and then when Sun, and I think Monty went to work for them, and then when Sun was sold to Oracle, the, he uh, forked out some of the code to create Maria database system that you see on the lower right hand corner over there. That was 2010 and Maria is, is operating as an independent system at the time. Now above Maria you have IRC, that's Internet Relay Chat. It's a chat system that predates the internet. It's from 1988. It was developed at the University of Oulu. So that was the first system that was a client server based chat uh, system and uh, in Finland they um, created Irk, we call it Irk galleries for gamers and it was really popular among the you know the uh, tech nerds back in the time. It was also used by the US military in the Gulf War for quickly reporting back and forth between troops and between the headquarters. In the middle down there you see Polar this is another very old historic invention. It is the first wireless heart rate monitor that was developed in Finland. So a gentleman by the name of Seppo Säynä ja Kangas back in 1975, he was an avid cross country skier and he was interested in finding out how you can um, track your heart rate when you're skiing. So he started working on it and he founded Polar as the company in 1977 and the first commercial product Polar, world's first wearable wire-free heart rate monitor was launched in 1982. So that's the grandfather of all of our Fitbits and Apple smart watches. And then we've got Nokia, the blue logo on the right upper hand corner, of course, quite well known, um, but some of the history may not be well known. So, for example, text messages, the modern text message that we use in the mobile phones was um, invented by a Nokia employee. His name was Matti Makkonen. Other um, really groundbreaking technologies, but not so well known for consumers are Things like, of course, with the network standards, first world's GSM networks were uh, created and launched by Nokia. Um, also patents in the inbuilt antenna. If you remember first, mobile phones had an antenna that you had to pull out. Nokia invented a way to put the antenna inside the phone, making them pretty, but still functional. A lot of chipset software, UI, and also video coding patents that by the way, a lot of the Finnish startups nowadays work with videos and imaging. That's the legacy of, of this history. 
Um, interestingly enough, if you Google iPhones, Nokia patents, iPhone has a lot of Nokia patents in it, which became public during one of the lawsuits. A lot of um, these chipsets and the video coding patents that they they fought over for a long time, but then eventually iPhone um, agreed to, to pay a fair license. Today, Nokia is most known of the 5G cellular network solutions. They say they're the only end-to-end -end 5G solution provider, meaning as a carrier, you can only work with, with Nokia if you want to, to uh, you know, build and launch a 5G network solution for your consumer clients. Uh, Nokia has about 70 carriers already now deploying 5G networks in the US that those include AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, Verizon and uh, US Cellular. All right, so this is a grid. You see nine icons here on this slide. These are the Business Finland programs that I work with. So when I talk about digital technologies, this is what, what I mean. We have uh, cybersecurity. I mentioned the SSH. Oh, I didn't mention the SSH protocol actually. So on the history slide, Tatu Ulanen invented in 1995 this um, secure file, file transfer protocol, SSL, secure shell, something, which is widely in use in uh, securing file transfers even today. So there's a long history um, in the cybersecurity in Finland. We have a lot of AI development. We also have a lot of governmental in, in incentives and initiatives making Finland an AI ready country. Intelligent connectivity. I mentioned the IoT centers and data analytics. Data centers, Google's great example of that. We have a new and upcoming new space economy ecosystem as well. That means companies creating solutions that are based on the, um, um, you know, the increasing amount of small satellites that are um, in our orbit all the time. So there are huge business opportunities in uh, launching new services where you may want to launch your own satellite, but you don't necessarily need. There are so many satellites already up there where you can just rent space. Smart mobility, intelligent vehicles, mobility solutions on land, sea and air. We'll be doing another set of um, webinars just on that. Gaming, I mentioned uh, these great examples, success stories of Finnish gaming industry. VR, AR, very nice piece of news last week. Um, a Finnish company, VR company, hosted a May Day celebration for 700,000 people in Finland to celebrate May Day online. So that was a very encouraging example of, of how you can use online platforms for uh, gathering during the times of um, social distancing. And then finally, uh, fintech. We have a strong section of uh, the Finnish banks were very early in adopted, adopting mobile banking technology. So there's a long legacy there. So on each of these programs behind the scenes, what is happening is we've got ecosystems, strong ecosystems that consist of startup companies, established companies, um, public universities and private research institutes, and they all work together in creating new solutions, new products, um, new ideas that, that companies can take to market. And an interesting fact about the Finnish IPR system is that in each of the ecosystems, is a private, if a private company works with a university, the company can keep the IPR. Unlike in many countries, like in the US, if you work with an American uh, university, even if you're a private company, the university may want to hold on to the IPR and, and you're just left uh, in doing some sort of a licensing deals. Another great advantage what we have in this um, in the university world of Finland, if you're a researcher in the university, you are allowed to work at the same time in a startup company working on similar things that you um, you uh, do research on in the university. So it's a very open and encouraging system uh, for again. I want to say it's a celebration of the startup culture. So as a foreign direct 
investment professional for me, this sort of framework, it makes it easy for me to do my job. I mentioned earlier that one of the things that Megan and I and our colleagues do for you is to introduce you to the ecosystems in Finland. So if any of, of these um, industries or themes seem uh, interesting to you, please get in touch with me and I will be happy uh, to talk talk more on any of these. Also, we'll be doing more webinars on these topics, so please follow the scene. So I've been talking about the great talent that we have, very innovative, very creative bunch of people, but it, it really comes at a reasonable cost. Here is a benchmark of a 100 employee software development center. This was done uh, by the Financial Times. This is current from 2020. If you, um, USA is the most expensive place, uh, of course, but if you look at the EU, Finland is the least expensive place to do software development inside the EU. UK is currently a little cheaper, but then you don't get the access to the European Union market anymore. Here, um, this is my last slide. These are the tech development centers that currently operate, not all of them, just uh, some highlights. I talked about Google already. Intel, they actually, they have two campuses as an open source software center in Finland, and then they have a camera technology development center in the city of Tampere. This is the, the imaging technology legacy of Nokia that I mentioned. They, there was a huge pool of talent available at some point, and Intel was smart enough to grab those teams. Zalando is a well-known e-commerce platform in Europe. Uh, Denso is a uh, Japanese company. They arrived to Finland to do the smart mobility innovation. They have a lab where they work on smart fleet management systems, but also other systems for autonomous driving and um, how that links to the surrounding uh, upcoming smart cities, etc. Google, I mentioned, uh, NVIDIA has a major development center. They say they do their core tech whatever that means, not all of these companies openly want to discuss what they're doing. Microsoft has been in Finland for a number of years already, and they have a tech hub with multiple focus area uh, analytics, VR, AR, et cetera, et cetera. So with this, I want to say kitos or thank you for your attention, and I will be handing over to my colleague Megan. Um, thank you, Petra. Um, I will now share um, my slides and we will go through um, the clean tech opportunities um, in Finland. If you want to put on slide share. Yeah. We can see the slides. OK. OK. Yeah. Perfect. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so just a brief. Um, history on um, my background. I've been working for Business Finland for a little over a year now, particularly on the clean technologies. Um, so specifically the wind power, solar power, renewable energy um, and so forth. But I also work closely in the um, battery manufacturing. So um, looking at development of new batteries. Um, Finland is also a huge producer of the uh, raw materials for batteries. So the cobalt nickel as well as then taking those batteries and being able to recycle them and turn them back into renewable energy. Um, and then also uh, have my hands also in the bio and circular economy. Um, prior to business working with Business Finland, I ran AmCham Finland, the American Chamber of Commerce, um, out of the US for Finland. Um, I have a background in international business um, and international relations, so uh, worked with many different 
um, entities, including the U.S. government and other foreign countries in helping to promote um, business and international relations. So with that, uh, we'll get started and discuss with Cleantech. So when we think about energy and clean technology, um, we can't go about this without looking at um, the challenges of climate change the world is continually facing. Um, Finland has been a leader in looking at new ways to combat climate change um, through its technologies, through its clean tech and renewable energy uh, sector. Finland has the largest energy cluster in Northern Europe, and it has a very ambitious goal of being carbon neutral by 2035. As of right now, Finland is about 38% um, carbon neutral and is well on its way to make that goal. And I'm sure the next question would be, well, how does Finland, how is Finland able to do that? So Finland has had the advantage of um, legislation and governmental support. So with that, there have been policies that have been implemented within Finland to push these in, to push particularly this um, carbon neutral initiative forward. Um, so, Finland also is recognized as a smart energy powerhouse globally, and it continues to create uh, growth for Finnish companies and organizations. So it's, you know, Finland again has been a leading, um, has been a leader in the battery industry. It's been estimated as a whole in Europe that the battery industry will be a 230 billion euro um, industry within the next 20 years. Finland wants to be in the forefront of that for many reasons. One of the main reasons, as I mentioned in the beginning of my presentation, is the fact that out of all the EU countries, Finland is the only EU country um, that is able to mine the cobalt and nickel um, within the country. And there's a lot of mining power in northern Finland um, where this has taken place. So with that being said, you know, Finland is a forerunner in the battery industry and is continual look, continually looking at new technologies on how to push this forward. Um, again, another area where Finland is looking at moving forward is the smart grid. Um, there's a lot of Finnish players um, that are looking at the smart grid and, and really creating this billion dollar ecosystem within uh, smart grid solutions and so forth. And they're constantly looking for partners um, all over the world to help um, build their smart grid up. So this is another area that Finland is also looking um, to, to really move forward. Um, Finland also maintains its leading role globally um, in district heating and cooling. Um, there are many, many new innovations supported by research and development and innovation funding for this ecosystem. Um, this is, again, another stronghold that Finland has um, and has been a forerunner in this area and is, again, looking for international partners to um, really push this district heating um, forward and also to, to share its technologies. So what are Finland's strongholds? Um, as mentioned, I talked about the batteries from Finland, the smart energy generation, the smart grids, um, smart buildings, which also uh, is kind of lumped into this uh, district heating and cooling. Um, the, as Petra mentioned, the IoT AI digitalization, and then this district energy. So, then the question would be, how did Finland get to this point? Aside, for, aside from the drive and innovation that Finland continuously has, it also has um, three major hubs of test beds. They include the Vasset Tech Hub, um, the Smart Altanami, which is one of the largest test beds in Finland, and the Olin Islands. 
out of the three test beds, I would definitely say the Smart Altamani and the Olin Islands are the two biggest test beds and the ones that um, are utilized the most. And we'll touch more on the test beds in the next slide. So looking at the smart energy platform and the smart autonomy, so what do these test pads do and what are their focus areas? So the focus areas include the energy data for new applications and services, the energy efficiency in renewable energy, and real-time data monitoring and control. These are all the focus areas in which people are able to, companies, people, and people are able to utilize our test beds. Specifically, the objectives for these test beds is to have a living lab with real customers involved. So somewhere where customers, companies, individuals um, that are leading in, in this type of research can really go and, and test firsthand how their products could be utilized and how they work. Um, it's internationally recognized, and we want to be even more internationally recognized. We want um, the international community to understand that Finland is a hub for having this, these test beds, and we want you to come over to Finland and really utilize those test beds um, to help push your product forward. And then um, again, you know, when you're utilizing these test beds, it sh you have the ability to showcase, um, we have the ability to showcase the Finnish competencies um, that I've mentioned thus far. So what is our role in international cooperation? Um, Petra touched on a couple of these, but I'll just go a little bit, um, a little bit more in depth on, on some of them. Um, so funding for both ecosystem projects and the development of smart solutions for individual companies. Um, building networks with international and academic communities. This is a big one. You know, um, at Business Finland, we pride ourselves in helping to bridge that gap um, between different networks. We want the companies to meet other companies that you that can help push business forward and bring new business into Finland. But we at the same time, we also very much push it on the academic side because with the academic side, we're able to utilize the research and development and innovation. And through that those that new research and development, companies are able to find value um, and we're able to then do industry partnerships which then leads to um, bigger businesses and more investments into the country. So that's a, a huge, huge one for us. And then, as I mentioned, the, the, utilizing our um, test beds, Smart Autonomy, Olin Islands, uh, the Vasa uh, Energy Hub are the three test beds. Um, and as mentioned, the Smart Autonomy and Olin Islands are the biggest ones that we have. And then lastly, the company interface and global presence. Um, again, you know, you want your company to be, you know, uh, have that visibility. We have the technologies, we have the research, we have the development um, in these areas, and Finland can help you do that as a whole. And then also looking at Finland and where it's strategically placed. Um, as mentioned, Finland is part of the EU, um, and where it's located, it's a great entry point into the EU market as a whole. You can start to build your business in Finland, but then you have access to other parts of Europe, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, and then you have short distance over to Asia um, and, and so forth. I think going even into Asia, it's about a six six hour flight. So in comparison to you know flying from the US to Asia, which is about a 16 to 24 hour flight, if you have um, you know your roots in Finland, you're able to get back and forth to not only Europe but also Asia fairly quickly. And so with that, um, I just want to say, you know, welcome to Finland. Again, we have world class technologies and ecosystems. We have the brain power um, for service and product innovation. Um, as Petra mentioned, well educated, um, self driven, um, creative problem solvers. Uh, we are very keen on doing the international cooperation. 
and we have strong innovation support from the government, which is a key to pushing a lot of these initiatives forward. Thank you.